Ben Rogan and Rodney Peet on AM570 LA Sports. Full three-hour show today. We've got a ton of stuff to get to. Bottom of the hour, Rodney. We will debut our new game. Uh-oh. No, I think it's Know Your Team. It is. Today, it's Know Your Lakers. So, Know Your Squad. Know Your Squad. All right. Let's get so it right, Freddie. Whoever, yeah, good start. We'll debut our new game. I don't know the name of it. It's, it's written on the rundown, Fred. It, it says Know Your Lakers. It does not say Know Your Squad. But it's Know Your Lakers today. So whoever wants to jump on and play with Rodney at the bottom of the hour, you're going to Wood Ranch. Yeah, I got you. You got it? Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll all learn the new game together. That's coming up at 1230. Let's get to this. I tweeted it out over the weekend. Uh, everybody looks for a villain in every story. I'll tell you a story, and then you tell me who the villain is. It involves the Raider or the, the Rams and the Chargers and some tension between the two organizations at this point. This is confirmed, and it's over the building of the Inglewood Stadium. That is confirmed as well. Before I break that down, a little history to get you caught up. In the National Football League, if a city does not give the owner the kind of stadium they believe is necessary, the only remedy is relocation. You can't find the city. You relocate. And that's built in to the agreements. The NFL had a grand plan. The Rams were in St. Louis. The Rams were not performing. Roger Goodell wanted a team in Los Angeles. It helps in the television negotiations. It was also time to move back out west, and he wanted a palace. He wanted a place that would emulate the feel of the NBA. He wanted Hollywood stars to be seen. He wanted them visible. He wanted this to be the number one entertainment destination on the planet. That was his plan for Los Angeles. Also, the plan all along was to put two teams here. Now, in California, as the Chargers know and as the Raiders know, you're not going to get public money for a stadium. That's not going to happen. No one is going to give you money to build a stadium in the state of California. It's going to have to be on your dime. So Roger Goodell looks around and he says, we need to come to Los Angeles. We want to build this palace. We need someone with money. And we need someone that knows how to build things. Stan Kroenke was the perfect man. Stan Kroenke is a developer. He is very well off. And the city of St. Louis was not going to perform, meaning they were not going to keep his stadium as a top-tier stadium. So is it safe to say that he need, he was looking, meaning Roger Goodell, and when you say Roger Goodell, it's the other owners as well because they Roger Goodell answers to those guys, um, that they were looking for someone because they weren't going to do expansion in L.A. That had been floated for a minute that they were going to bring in a new expansion team. This was years ago. That was not going to happen. Um, and the fact that it was going to be an existing team, that they were looking for an owner with deep pockets. They were. And yeah. that man was Stan Kroenke. Yeah. Made complete and total sense. And by the way, in part of the grand plan, Stan Kroenke was going to come and build a stadium for two teams. Remember, that was part of the agreement. When this mm-hmm. all started, two teams. What are those teams, Rodney? was supposed to be an expansion team. Mm -hmm. And in the master plan, Stan Kroenke would have built the Inglewood Stadium. A couple of years later, the NFL would have expanded. One team in L.A., one team in London or Toronto. If each of those owners that bought the franchises had to pay $3 billion just to get into the game, that's $6 billion to NFL owners. Yep, That was the grand plan. And off and running they went. Kroenke had the meetings with Inglewood was able to purchase the land, and then it seemed a foregone conclusion that the Rams would relocate, except for one thing. One thing. Dean Spanos and Mark Davis needed stadiums in their respective markets. And there were those that believed it was unfair to let Stan Kroenke simply move back to Los Angeles when Dean Spanos and Mark Davis were both closer to L.A. Certainly in older stadiums in in St. Louis was, yeah. So what happened was, as the grand plan was hatched, as Dean Spanos and Mark Davis got a hold of this, other owners around the league suddenly thought this was unfair, one of them being former Panther owner Jerry Richardson. He had a conversation with Dean Spanos and said, you know, you shouldn't let this happen. You should go to L.A. You need a stadium. And for the people in San Diego, not to belabor a point, you're well aware of the fact that down in San Diego, Nobody was going to pay for that stadium. There had been numerous public votes. Everybody voted it down. 
Dean Spanos was not getting that stadium, and they needed it. And Dean Spanos was not paying for it. And he wasn't paying for it because Dean Spanos is a very wealthy man, but not in the division of Stan Kroenke. Right. There's a difference in divisions of wealth. And Dean Spanos was not capitalized enough to be able to pay for that new stadium. So they came up with a plan. He and Mark Davis, we're going to compete with Stan Kroenke and go to Carson. I think we all remember that. And as I said back at the time, Carson was never going to happen. It was simply a smokescreen. Never going to happen. Why? No matter what you heard, no matter what you read, no matter what anybody said, why? Because the plan all along was to put the Rams, Stan Kroenke, in Inglewood and build this palace. But as things continued on, suddenly there was going to have to be a vote because there were those that supported the Carson plan, friends of Dean Spanos, friends of Mark Davis, within the ownership group. They thought, okay, Dean, you deserve it. And even the re- relocation committee, remember, they uh, they came out, which Jerry Richardson, as you mentioned, was the head of that committee, um, really believed that that was going to happen. Well, that was their recommendation. Yeah. But remember this, that was not the grand plan. No. That was their recommendation. So just before they have the vote, and that vote took place in Houston, I was there for that, suddenly there were three options. One, Rams to Inglewood. Two, Raiders and Chargers to Carson. Three, Rams plus one to Inglewood. Then it became a secret ballot. So people that had told Mm -hmm. Dean Spanos to his face, I'm voting for you, Mm -hmm. didn't vote for him. Didn't vote for the Carson Project. Because the plan was already in place. And the Rams were coming back. Stan Kroenke was going to develop the Inglewood Project. So they have the vote. And at that point in time, the Rams win. But the league was aware of the fact that the vote was going to go a certain way. And suddenly they found themselves in a very difficult position. They had to come up with a plan to try and satisfy the Chargers and the Raiders, who desperately needed stadiums. And they did. And this was the plan. On this paper, we have terms about if the other team, that scenario with the Rams plus one, sign it now. Sign it now. Everybody sign it. Stan Kroenke signed one. And the number one team, which proved to be the Rams, had to cover everything. All expenses. Everything. They're on the hook for everything. Building the stadium. Developing the land. Everything. The number two team basically came in as a partner that didn't have to pay anything. So Stan Kroenke, all of a sudden, is on the hook for all of this. And if somebody were to come with him, they're coming for free, basically. They're here. He's footing the whole bill for everything. He's indemnifying the NFL if there was a lawsuit in St. Louis or Oakland or San Diego. But, he, but does he care? Because he's got the golden goose now. He's got L.A. At that point. Got, at, that, at that point. Right? Absolutely, Rodney. Okay. At that point. That stadium was penciled out to be $1.9 billion. With cost overruns, it'll be about $5 billion. Keep that in mind. So after the Rams win... They come up with the plan that the Chargers have two years, Rodney, to decide if they want to come to L.A. If they pass, it's in the Raiders' option to come to L.A. And the thinking in the league is, within this period of time, they're going to figure this out. Somehow they'll get him a stadium in San Diego. Maybe they'll throw in a couple more bucks from the league side. Maybe they'll massage the public who will finally vote for the appropriation of funds. And for Mark Davis... They believe, in the back of their mind, he will take the Raiders somewhere else, which turned out to be Las Vegas. Off and running we go. The Rams are here one year. So that means Dean Spanos has one more year to make a decision. Nobody, nobody thought that Dean Spanos would actually pull the trigger. And when he announced, I am accepting my option and coming to L.A., and again, the reason he did that 
is because he saw no hope in getting that facility at all in San Diego. So then if that's the case, then why didn't anybody believe that he was coming to L.A.? I mean, if they knew, I mean, and everybody did know this, that there was no chance for them, no public money. The vote got voted down every time they went. It, it went to a vote in San Diego, and he was not going to foot the bill himself. Why did they think that he was not going to exercise that option, meaning the NFL? Why did they think that he wasn't? Because somehow, some way, they thought he'd play ball, they'd figure it out, they would get it done. They had enough to worry about. We're building Inglewood now. They had enough to worry about. He pulled the trigger, which he absolutely had the right to do. Had the right to do. He was able to relocate. They gave him that option, and he took it. That's not on Dean Spanos. That's on the league. So now here he is. Remember what I told you? Who was responsible for all costs of the stadium? Stan Kroenke. Mm -hmm. Now you've heard the term PSL, the personal seat license. And the way the NFL works is for the right to buy certain season tickets, you have to pay for the seat and then buy the tickets. So where does that money go? In some instances, good seats for the Rams were $75,000 for the personal seat license. Where does that money go? It goes back to pay for part of the construction of the stadium. Now, the NFL estimated that they would be able to sell each team, and I don't know how they came up with this number, $400 million worth of PSLs, $800 million. And really, the only contribution the Chargers had to make were the PSL sales. Because that Mm -hmm. goes back to the construction of the stadium. Right. Okay. Well, the Chargers get here and realize that the Rams are in the number one spot. It's going to take them time to build. They know they are not going to sell as many PSLs. And certainly, at the price that Stan Kroenke is. Not going to happen. So the Chargers decide we have to build a fan base. It's going to take us a while, and we'll do so. We will charge less for our PSLs. We are not going to be able to deliver $400 million. By the way, that was never in writing, but we're not going to be able to do it. Maybe we'll get you 320 we hope, but we can't do $400 million. At which point, Stan Kroenke decides, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm charging this. You're paying nothing. You're undercutting me. And now you're not even going to be able to deliver on a number that at best was a guess. Let me tell you something. The Chargers did nothing wrong. Nothing wrong. They are not culpable. They are not the villain. They were living up to the letter of the NFL agreement. Give them the PSL money. We will. But we can't charge as much because we're now aware of the fact it's going to take us longer to build our fan base. There's part of the tension. Stan Kroenke, the overruns on the stadium are excessive. Cost of doing business. Chargers, who are under no obligation to do anything but give the PSL money and nothing in writing about how much it should be, will give them what they have. But it's not what they thought. But that's not the Chargers' fault. They did nothing wrong. Now there is this. You will hear talk that Dean Spanos has no money. You will hear talk that Dean Spanos is borrowing money. That is correct. He is borrowing money. It is incorrect to say he has no money. The money he is borrowing is going to pay down the relocation fee of $650 million. By NFL rules, that is legal and must be approved by the National Football League. By the way, the Rams and Raiders may ask for that as well. So yes, that's being financed per NFL rules. But what you will hear is that he has no money. So he is borrowing to keep the franchise afloat. That is an incorrect statement. Now the thought, Well, maybe they'll just go back to San Diego. That is an incorrect thought. And here is why. The reason they left is the reason they can't go back. There's no stadium. The city 
and the county are not going to pay. They're not going to donate enough money. So the reason he left is really the reason they wouldn't go back. And once you got here, with the appreciation of your asset, why would you want to go back? It's worth more here. In this story, where Dean Spanos, and people are surprised, I guarantee on Twitter people are surprised, because I thought I was going to bash him today. I have to tell you something. He's done nothing wrong, Rodney. Nothing. Nothing wrong. Is there a villain in this story? Sure. Who's the villain? The NFL. (laughs) Always. The NFL is the villain. The NFL drew up that agreement. Not Stan Kroenke. And not Dean Spanos. And by the way, no one had to sign it. But they all did. No, their eyes were on the prize. Their eyes were on the prize. So as this starts to leak out, and it will, I got a hold of it over the weekend. I made calls. I talked to people at the NFL. I talked to people with the franchises. As this starts to leak out, it's going to be massaged to appear a certain way. What, whatever the interest of whoever is leaking it has. The truth is what I told you. He did nothing wrong. He's really, whether you like the Chargers or don't, whether you want them here or you don't, whether the people in San Diego are upset or they're not, truly the bottom line, Dean Spanos really has done nothing wrong, has done nothing wrong, has done nothing